wonder. It's a wonder. It's a wonder. It's a wonder. It's a wonder. The Word of Life with the Lord's General, Prophet John Anoche. Word of Life broadcast with Prophet John Anoche is made possible by partners of John Anoche Ministries. Still to come on Word of Life with Prophet John Anoche. There were three Jewish boys, Mesha, Shadrach, Abednego, and they said, we will not bow. Now, hear the case. When they were constructing the graven image, God saw it. He didn't talk to them. When they were done and they pushed the graven image to the side, God saw it. He didn't speak to the Hebrew boys. When the king gave a command, everybody should bow. If you don't bow, we will kill all of you by the fire. God saw the fire. He didn't do anything about the fire. At least he should have caused storms and rain to fall. So it destroys the fairness of fire. He didn't do it. I want to show people something. Now, everybody, when they heard the trumpet, they bow. But these three boys, we say, we don't bow. Never. We only bow to the God of Israel. Nebuchadnezzar even told them something. He says, you fools. I came to your land. I took you from your town. Arrested your king. Killed the ones who resisted me. And brought you to the land. If there was a God, why didn't he save you? The revelation was that the prophet was sent. He said, listen, God has allowed it. But it doesn't mean that God has allowed us to bow to your God. That one is not part of the prophecy. At every point in time, you need to be correct with the Bible. Every point in time. Light the world with the word of life. Word of life. This is a word of life with the Lord's general, Prophet John Anoche. This is the day of the wine. It's the day of his blood. I'm excited. Hallelujah. So I welcome all of you all over the world to our glorious communion service. Amen. Of the tree of life. Hallelujah. And um, you are welcome. You are blessed to be under the tabernacle of God. Amen. You are blessed. Hallelujah. This is a kingdom with power. This is a kingdom with strength. This is a kingdom with glory. And this is a kingdom full of excellence. And somebody has that kind of grace upon his life or her life in Jesus' mighty name. And dominion is all over you and with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are his candidate in Jesus' name. You are his seed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You swim in the latter glory of Jesus. Uh, the glory of the latter house is greater than the former. The last rain has fallen upon you, somebody. Amen. You are the blessed of God. Amen. Let the name of Jesus be glorified. Amen. Clap your hands and appreciate Jesus in our Glory. Midst. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. Now, um, let's begin the word of God. We are in a season where there's a lot of... Um, explanations of the season a lot of teaching on the season for us to understand the season and fully enjoy what has been ordained for us in this season now this is a season that we are we have come to where we must fully depend on the lord so um in the harvest season this is actually a subtopic of the harvest season i taught last week you know um but this is a season that I want to talk about. This is not the feet being formed, but I'm talking about the, the timings of the Lord in the harvest season, where I talked about the time to plant and the time to harvest. You know, um, there is time for everything. And I talked about the time of harvest and the time of, the time of planting and the time of harvest. But I'm continuing by talking about this is the time to depend fully on God. In the harvest season, you depend fully on God. And this is not just a mere word that I am just declaring, but this is actually a prophetic word that he spoke in time past. And I want us to go into it so we can understand our state of heart and our state of mind, our composure, the kind of mindset we need to develop, the kind of um, life we need to live, the kind of understanding we need to have 
in the season that we have entered in. And, and that is the reason why I want us to talk about it. And these are scriptures I've read to you, you know, a couple of times. And, but I want us to go, um, you know, further into it so we can have understanding. So my chief scripture that um, we are reading is the book of um, Zechariah chapter 8 from the verse 1 to the last verse. The last verse is 23. And I want us to go into it. I want Apostle to read unto us the entire book of Zechariah chapter 8. The chapter 8 of the book of Zechariah. From the book of Hagar, you go to the book of Zechariah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shada Bahaya. Zechariah chapter 8 from verse 1. Yes. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Zion with great zeal. With great fervor, I am zealous for her. Thus says the Lord, yeah. I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with a staff in his hand because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, if it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnants of, of this people in these days, will it also be marvelous in my eyes, says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. Thus says the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. You who have been hearing in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, who spoke in the day the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts, that the temple might be built. For before these days, there were no wages for man nor any hire for beast. There was no peace from the enemy for whoever went out or came in. For I set all men, everyone, against his neighbor. But now I will not treat the remnant of these people as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give its fruit, the ground shall give an increase, and the heaven shall give their due. I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these. And it shall come to pass that just as you were cursed among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you, and you shall be a blessing. Do not fear, let your hands be strong. For thus says the Lord of hosts, just as I determined to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I would not relent. So again in these days, I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not fear. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, justice, and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor. And do not love a false oath for all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, The first of the fourth month, the first of the fifth, the first of the seventh, and the first of the tenth, shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feast for the house of Judah. Therefore love truth and peace. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Peoples shall yet come, inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, let us continue to go and pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will go also. Yes, many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days, ten men from every language of the nation shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Amen. Clap your hands and appreciate the word of the Lord. This is a very powerful prophecy. Very, very powerful prophecy. I have explained some few areas, especially from the chapter, the verse number 1 to the verse number 12 and 13. I've explained some stuff there. But let me begin by introducing to you what the Lord means here. Now remember that this is Zachariah, and um, Zachariah was one of the prophets that 
was actually in um, in Babylon that came out of Babylon and the time that they were building their second temple. Uh, and so the prophecy was not given at the time when the Israelites were living together. This prophecy was given at the time when the people of um, Israel, the Jewish particularly, and the, and the Levites, and a bit of Benjamite, and some of the Israelites as well, and the whole world had gone into bondage under the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, in the land of China. And that particular gathering, now remember that if people are teaching the word of God and they are not a bit careful, they might think that the land of China is a particular static land. So they might refer to a particular place and say that this was the land of China and miss the land of China that is at its peak and dispensing evil at this time where rulership of the entire world system is coming from. So I want you to understand the Bible carefully that if we look at, we critically look at the land of China that I taught you under the kingdom's teaching, you will notice that I spoke about two lands of China and then I introduced the third one, but I did not put emphasis on it. But I did mention them. I even did mention about a certain particular kind of trees that were grown in that particular place. And so I told you that this particular tree did not grow at every part of the world. They have specific places that they grow. And so God was giving us a clue. The prophets were prophesying and giving us clue as to where it was at the time. But when you look at the land of China, in the dispensation of the end, where we are, you will notice that it is actually being um, organized in a different location from the first one and from the, uh, from the first one from the second one. Now, understand that Nimrod was the one who started from the land of China. And he brought all the people to a place and ruled over them because they saw that that place was a plain land and that it was a good place to rule over all the people. And it was a common ground that they had to bring the people onto. So it is more of, more of the place where the authority of this particular um, you know, rulership will be. And that is the place they call the land of China. Because China simply means, Bab Babylon simply means what? Confusion. China simply means what? Confusion. So I want you to understand that one. It's the same way people when they read the Bible, they make doctrines out of some things. Let me give you one of the just briefly so that we can proceed. Now, a lot of people have a lot of assertion and it has become part of their doctrines. And so it gets to a point where they don't see God and don't experience God and they think that God is not there or God is not for them and God is for certain particular groups of people. This is just mere um, hardening of, or hardness of heart which is not by revelation and by no, is not by knowledge. Okay? That is what it is. They've allowed themselves for a spirit of stupor to what? Govern their heart and mind. But that is not something that we can do anything about. Amen? It is to their own destruction. But let me explain this to you. When you read the Bible carefully and you delve into the book of Daniel, where there were three brothers. In actual fact, there were more than three, but the rest of them were actually in the higher positions in Babylon. At the time of Nebuchadnezzar, when he was the king over all the world, and God had actually raised him up, and God even called him my servant who would do his will, because God wanted someone to rule over the whole world and bring the people of God at the time that God has given them the whole world under his subjection, because they felt that now there's no king, there's no country, who, because they've defeated the, whole, the superpowers of the world. They, they defeated, um, you know, Egypt. Egypt was then the superpower. They passed through all the land of Canaan. The giant. They defeated the giant. The giant were the ones who were the wicked people at the time who were feared. Because the giant 
Imagine giants who have built cities and nations and they've constructed wall around the city and the, and, the, and the country. Giant. In actual fact, when you're going to a giant nation, you are afraid. But the giant themselves have built walls. What do you think will be the height of the walls? Those were the walls of Jericho that came down. There was no, there was no way the Israel could climb their walls. It was not easy. Because they were giant in those days. Okay, these were the Canaanites, the Amalekites, the Perizzites. There were many. And nothing, you could not do nothing about it. And the only way the Sidonians had friendship with them was because the Sidonians was more or less their spiritists. They were, they, are, they were the spirit consultants at the time. So the Sidonians were, they were the places where they consulted spirits. And they were their brothers from their lineage. They were their brothers. So they were the ones that created the channels of worship. To the devil, the headquarters of the devil. In fact, when you went to them, they could just look through a stone and connect you to, you know, the head of the devil. For you to hear uh, what the devil's uh, issues were. So, these were sorcerers. So, it was easy for them to have that kind of relationship. But not for the people of God who were coming from Israel. So, the Canaanites were not afraid of them. They knew that no nation fights with them and, and, and they win. They will beat you up. But they were there minding their own business. But the land, unfortunately for them, was the one that God had given to Abraham and his seed. So the people were coming to possess their land. And then according to the divine map that Moses was carrying, that was the location they had built walls upon. So because it was their land, it demanded a different strategy. Now if you are not careful in the church, in the dispensation of salvation right now, people may receive Christ and may be confronted with issues in their families. Where there are evil giants in their families, everybody looks equal in terms of height, phys physically. But I'm talking about spiritual things now. So, but you have passed from your family into the spiritual kingdom of God. Where here, we are equal before the Lord. Where there's no partiality. There's neither a Jew nor a Gentile. All of us are saints in the eyes of God. But in a family, you want to defeat the purpose. What has been established over the years, you want to defeat it. But there are principles in the word of God, but you look into the situation that happened in the, among the people of you know, Israel, where they came back to their land to possess it. But you have been given a land which is the church and the kingdom of God. And that is where you have been born to. So when they were going, they did not need to sacrifice. In fact, the Lord said, let them go so that they will sacrifice for me. They needed to possess the land first before they sacrificed to God. But you, in that family where your father and your mother came to meet and had created a family, where giants have been before you were born, there has not been sacrifices. In fact, the only sacrifice that has happened is that they buried virgins and detected the demonic you know, heights at the time. They've actually exalted the Abama, that means their place of worship. But you have become Christ. Your spirit, you are born again. Your spirit is new. You just came from heaven, fresh one. But you, are, you have not yet renewed your mind fully to the word of God. And to the way the things of the spirit work. But you have actually seen something in the Bible that talks about the fact that if you want to go to war to a people and overcome them and sit on top of them, you must go before the Lord in sacrifices and, and great offerings. Then the Lord, with praises, he comes to fight and overthrow the principalities and powers of the family. But nay, on the father's side, you turn to the place. On the mother's side, you turn to the place. You just want to bulldoze them off. So you have formed doctrines out of this Babylonian system where the Israelites went to overthrow them because of a 430 year promise unto Abraham. We 
which the guy had even done things for them. And they were also led by a prophet who gave them the strategies which for them to be skillful, they had to spend 40 years in the wilderness to be trained. The Bible said they all passed through the water. They were all baptized. They all drank of the water from the rock and they all drank the same spiritual word, baptism. So it was symbolism of the baptism of Christ so that they cannot possess the land allotted to them by God. But if you are not deep in knowledge, you would want to do your things and build a doctrine out of this structure. And that is why many people have become casualties. Let me give you another example. I hope you understood me. Uh. Let me give you another example. Masataka Bayadish. In the time of the reign of Babylon, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, three Hebrew brothers, and there was an erection of a graven image at the time. And Nebuchadnezzar sought everybody because at that time it, they were multi ethnic groups or tribal groups that were living in the land of China at the time. So he employed all of them to worship that graven image that had been lifted. And at the sound of the trumpet all of them who were not part of the council of rule were supposed to bow. So Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel and his rest, the rest of his people, Daniel had made a name already. We're standing on the platform. That is why you don't hear Daniel's name, but you might think that Daniel bowed. Daniel was part of the presbytery. The astrologers, the wise men at the time were the council of rule around the king. So he, he was part of the people on the platform. So they were the watchers watching the people to bow. And I think this is the reason why when he was not a part of the people who were supposed to bow, they didn't really hear anything about him with respect to his God. And so there was scheme about the other kings and the council of people around the king that they should cause Daniel to fall because Daniel has become too powerful and if they are not careful, he will even one day become a king over them. And he's a young boy, a young Hebrew prince who from the people of Jew had come to be more or less like um, um, a servant of the king. But God had spoken that there's no prince of Jew, none of the people, the royals of Judah is supposed to be an eunuch in any kingdom. Anyway, it was a rule. But here in the case, God broke his own rule because he sets standards and breaks them so that he becomes another standard. Why? Because of Christ. And I'll show you the... And Prophet John started teaching something about that. Everybody was confused, but we'll come there. You know, sometimes we want to show crutchy power. What we represent. We might teach you for 30 minutes, you don't understand where we are coming from and where we are going. Sometimes it's not intentional. Are you hearing me? Okay. You will soon understand what, what I want to say. But the first one you did understand. So let me go to this one. So, the king started telling everybody that this particular graven image I have raised, everybody is supposed to converge at the, at the square. Okay? At the praetorium. And everybody is supposed to bow. A huge field. Bow. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, there were three Hebrew boys, Jewish boys. They were called Meshach or Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. And they said, we, we will not bow. Now, hear the case. We will not bow. When they were constructing the graven image, God saw it. He didn't talk to them. When they were done and they pushed the graven image to the side, God saw it. He didn't speak to the Hebrew boys. When they lifted it up and it was covered, God saw it. He still did not say anything to the Hebrew boys. At least there's no record 
of such information. And there's a reason why there was no record. And I'll show you the reason. Because if there was record, they wouldn't have spoken like that. Now, when they unveiled the graven image, God saw it. He still did not speak about it. When they were conveyed to the same place, a lot of them, God saw it. Again, not a word from heaven unto these people. No revelation. No knowledge. Nothing. When the king gave a command, everybody should bow. If you don't bow, we, are, we, will set, we have set a, a furnace of fire. We will kill all of you by the fire. God saw the fire. He didn't do anything about the fire. At least he should have caused storms and rain to fall. So it destroys the furnace of fire. He didn't do it. When they set the fire, and even they set the fire ten times, God saw it. He heard it. He knew their intention. He did nothing. And then, the time came and the king said, let the trumpet flow. God heard the trumpet. Ba, ba, ba. God heard it. No tender. No lightning. No earthquake. He did nothing. Of which it's easy for him to just shake himself. It's easy. He didn't do anything. He just left everybody like that. I'm sure they were looking for the last word before the trumpet will come. So they will know whether to bow or not. But nothing happened. I want to show people something here. I want to show people something. Now, everybody, when they heard the trumpet, they bow. Including some of the Jewish people, community, they bow. But these three boys, one, two, three. The priests, they were arrested. The kings, at the time, they arrested. When they all went to the, pre, the, the Babylon place, they all bow. There were a lot of prophets at the time. They bow. But these three boys, we say, would not bow. So the king said, ah, there are three people, they didn't bow. Please, why won't you bow? They said, oh, king, we will not bow. He said, play it second time. If they don't bow, they will see. Said, ah, king, you should do your worst at the first time because we will not bow. Now, we will not bow to this graven image. Never. We only bow to the God of Israel. And the people of Israel and some of the Jews were saying that you people are fools, you want to die. When all these things were gone, God did see it. If God did not see that he should bring us from our land to this place and has humbled us here and he didn't talk, he's brought us here, they beat us, they killed some of us and you people will not bow. You are a fool, so they will kill you. You don't love a bank coin. They'll kill you. They did not bow. Never. They played the thing the second time. These Jewish boys, they said, even we know that our God can save us from whatever nonsense that you want to do against us. Even if he doesn't come through for us, we will still not bow. Still. Now, I want you to hear the provocative word. They spoke to the king. Master, do your worst. We will not bow. I'm telling you, king, the three of us, no, no, none of us will bow. Do your worst. It's a provocative, you know, statement. If you know about, shut up and stand there. Like what Jesus did. Tell us, are you the king of the Jews? Mumbudi. Are you king of the Jews? As you have said. Now this guy, what kind of rhetoric statement is this? Now this one, they told the king that we will not bow. Our God can save us. Even if he decides not to do it we will still not bow to this graven image. Yeah. Our Bible says, they have ears, but they can't hear. They have mouth, but the graven image can't speak. The graven image has eyes, but it can't see us. We will not bow. We will not bow. The king said, oh, blow it. They blow the thing, pam, pa, pa. Everybody bowed. They were still standing. The king said, ha, ha. These people want to dare the book at Nazar. Ha, ha. 
My name is Nebuchadnezzar. He said, we don't care. They brought them to the finish of it. The guys were going, they were happy. They were singing songs of Zion. They threw them into the you know, furnace of fire. It's like a lake of fire. They entered. The people were even going to throw them. The Bible says some of them perished. They entered into the furnace of fire. The fourth man showed up. Oh. Hallelujah. If they had bowed, would the fourth man show up? No. Now, do you know the principle of people now? They have built a doctrine and they said that if God didn't want me to do it, he would have spoken in the first place. Fools hate knowledge. So the reason I'm taking this is because if God didn't want to, he wouldn't have allowed it to come. Fools hate knowledge. My Lord said, Palikito Sahisha Kappa. God saw that Nebuchadnezzar even told them something. He says, you fools. I came to your land. I massacred your temple. I took you from your temple. I arrested your king. Killed the ones who resisted me. And brought you to the land. If there was a God, why didn't he save you? The revelation was that the prophet was sent. He said, listen, God has allowed it. But it doesn't mean that God has allowed us to bow to your God. That one is not part of the prophecy. At every point in time, you need to be correct with the Bible. Every point in time. So we will not bow. We will not bow. We will not bow. Who are you? Hmm. Who be see and some man coin? Who are be see some man coin? Who are Obi Wubi? My friend. That's why all die be die. Whether you got accident and died, or who die and I want sorry be man, all die be die. die. Three Hebrew boys. I wish they were Christians. Kora Masia. But they were not. They were Jewish. Who had not even received Christ. They didn't even know Jesus. Mm. They had heard of the prophecies of Jesus to come. They did not bow. They did not bow. We'll do better. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the theology of this scholarly Christians at this time is killing the church. Killing the it's church. killing the revelation of the church. Mm. You said we will not bow. They didn't know Jesus. You know Jesus. Mm. You have heard of Jesus. He lives inside of your heart. Mm. He's told you don't bow to anything. Don't fear. Fear not. It's in over 365. It's like the cycle of the whole year. Don't bow. If Jesus didn't want me to bow, he would have showed up. The fourth man showed up at the revelation of fire. For him to show up is not your dictation. You have been told to believe unto death. Okay. Period. Period. Did you believe unto death? I asked Jesus something small. God, as I'm praying my last prayer, if you don't come through, it means you will not come. I will just they give God timelines. If you don't do this, I walk out of the church. Walk out. He will not come. God shows up at the diamond, at the heat of the day. That's where you see divine performance. You will not come. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. He didn't, he didn't come. He didn't show up. Call your bluff. I will not show up. Jesus is the king. It's not somebody that anybody can command. He's the king of kings. He was there. Because what the Lord wanted to reveal to them was himself as the fourth man in the midst of the storm. So that Nebuchadnezzar himself and his council of rule will also bow to the king. In our dispensation, Jesus want people to bow to him as the Lord. That's why he's the Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord of the armies of Israel, who have come upon the earth. But if initially there's small pressure, then you bow. You are not trusted. God cannot entrust the people of God unto your hands. You become a spiritual hypocrite. You bow to every circumstance of the world. Small under small pressure. They did not bow. Period. So the people have built doctrines on these things that they say that uh, if, the, if God was involved, you would have showed up. Oh, boy. That's not what the Bible teaches. God saw Jesus was going to die. He didn't do nothing. In fact, he left him. He died. 
Imagine when Lazarus died. They, they were crying and told Jesus. Said, Jesus said, it is for the glory of God to be revealed. And when you're talking about this, oh, don't let anybody deceive you. Poverty is a, listen. Hey. There is an, a proverb. Or say, who has said that before? I heard it from an old man. You can't add a cubic meter to your what? Your height. You cannot. It is the answer that makes the difference. But when you call and doesn't answer, what will happen? As you are doing, like, hey, Oh, if you call, he doesn't answer, what will happen? Are you the only one that I've called and God didn't answer? There are a lot. You go and ask them. He's God. Is there any other? Come challenge. That's what he said. That's the principle you keep. The principle is that your faith. Let me show you something. Jesus was there. God was there. He saw it. A woman had suffered eight years flowing blood. Have you seen even menstrual cycle? Just five days, seven days. Look at the way they suffer. You see somebody, you greet the person. No, no, no. He said, well, I was in my mood. Mood, man. And in a company, our boss, actually, I'm here in the sun, I'll be here with you. For mood, Nico. It's because, do you understand? I don't want to go there. Don't let me, let me forgive you. It's because you want your husband to pamper you. That's why. Send the money, we greet you. Good morning, dear. So, but why? Then you go to where we came out. So, why did he? So, you see, Santa, when we go through the mood, Oh, Jai. Sika ye ye ya chensa. Praise God. Hallelujah. Found such a winning. Oh, you know. Where you know, eh, yeah, says, sir. But what did they make us? Good. <laughs> There's a woman in the Bible. She had gone through blood flow for 12 years. 12 years. Now, 12 years of blood flow. There would have been three presidents. Four years, four years, another four years. If you suffer eight years, Master, it's not small suffering, no. It's almost a decade of wasting your time. Eight years of living in somebody's house, you would have paid bills, ah, uh, eight. Rent, eight years. The lady suffered. But when Jesus was head, instead of Jesus to see, and God would tell Jesus, Jesus, can you move and touch this woman? No. There were a crowd of people. At least, God, have mercy and good. No. She crawled on the ground and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. The power came when she herself touched. Okay. Not Jesus stretching his garment for her to touch. She herself located the garment, put her hand to oh, and touched. Yeah, so when Jesus said, if somebody touched me, Peter Dems will say, oh, oh. After they would be why? Master, I'm going to say, when she has no. I am fishing for over. Wait, oh. Look at the number of people here. Yes, that's what they said. Look, read the Bible. They said, ah, Jesus, look at these multitudes of people around. And everybody is touching you. How can you say somebody touch you? Everybody is touching you. And we are trying, we are even struggling to protect you. Jesus said, hey, I said somebody touch me. For the, this touch has made virtue to come out of me. The other touch was celebrity touch. Hey, everybody wants to take a picture with you. You know when you get to a place. Everybody wants to take pictures with you. Walk on red carpet with you. But this touch was drawing something. So it, it depends. All of us have come to church. All of us are giving. But the people who draw power are the people who touch with power. Mm. They draw. There's something they draw from God. Jesus said somebody because he draw power out of me. I felt virtue go, you know, go out of me. So if you are building doctrine, you say, God says, wherever I am, he will reach out to me. You are in trouble. Now, I taught people who are carrying burdens, wherever they are, Jesus will reach to them. He said, come unto me, all ye that are heavenly word, burdened and laid, higher, and I will give you, come, with your burden, come. He didn't say, where you are, I'll come to you. Come to me. The doctrines of the word of God is the one that is preached. The one is codified in the world. Not the one you think it is. Come to me. So if the Lord loves me, he gave me the gift. You just make it work. 
you have to you have to strive for the mastery. If I don't go to church, the man of God will see. Hey, John, see. I understand the word of God so much that I see God. I don't see these situations. If I don't go to church, the choir president will see. Nobody see anything, no. No. I'm angry. Even the communion said, I will not take it. Ha! Huh? Till Christ be formed in you, not me. My own is my own. Your own is your own. When Christ is not formed, you say, Pam, Pam, all of you come. You, Christ is not formed. You, so Jesus, I say this. Understand what to build doctrines on and what not to build doctrines on. It's just like people who say, Come as you are. Just as you are, come. So, because of that, every week you go to the marketplace. You just put concussions in cans and then you sell. You know that as the people are going, their, their stomach will some tumble. But because of money, you do it. It's a sin. What you are giving them is poison. And you are a child of God. Because God says, come as you are. You've forgotten the fact that if my people who call me by my name will humble themselves and what? And pray. And turn away from their wicked ways. I will hear them. You have not turned away from your ego. You say, come as you are. But before, because there's a repentful heart. The bribe. Elder, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bribe. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. So I want you to understand something. Jesus is universal. He's universal. He says that because of your tradition, you make the word of God of no effect. So it is wrong for someone to proclaim that the people here are dealing with things different from the people here. So our mode of operation of what Christ should be different from. You know, it's wrong. It's not word. It's not word. This is not word though. Everything was made by the word of God everything all things and he put all things to the subjection of the feet of the word jesus christ this is not word no wonder the people of god in this downtown didn't grow no there's no word you know now my people understand the reason why i said that the lord jesus told me that john spend time and teach the people now hold on with the miracles and because your life is full of miracles hold on let me withdraw the angel some of them you know, I, it was painful, but no problem. I understood it. So I started. Let me teach now. And situations will come, I'll just look at it and say, God will do it. Don't worry, you will not die with it. Even if I want to say, stop, this one. There are those I've stretched forth my hands and the power wasn't going. It was still in my hands. And I tell Apostle, Apostle, this is why I stretched my hand. I released the power. I saw the power getting out of my but It came back to me. We have to pray. You have to intercede for the person. I understand. I was in a conversation with, you know, one of the sons of, of God here. And he said something like, somebody said, do you go to that prophet's church? I was saying, my, it's not my church, it's Jesus' church. He said, that man, when he came here, to, and he started his ministry at the Vision, we, I went there. The kind of things that guy was doing, you know. Huh? I was there with Apostle when he was saying it. Say, huh? hmm. He said, he didn't say anything no further. Because whether it was not from God or from God, he didn't say. But he says, the kind of things he was doing there. <laughs> he said, I was there with my own eyes. What he was doing, he was so serious. I, we, have, we hadn't seen something like that before. before no. You know, they read it in the Bible. That we will even do more than what the Bible is written in the Bible. But see, when it is practically being done, they don't believe it. So then you that you are reading it, you are hypocrites. You are reading it, but you don't expect anybody to walk in it. These are huge hypocrite people. At least the man was testifying that what we saw. And I'm sure because of that, I understand it. I told the apostle, I said, hey. The Lord Jesus told me, John, teach them first. 
let them know that this realm is there. I have actually opened it for them. And when anybody walks in that, because when I was doing that, then people were afraid. When I was even coming to pray for people, they were running. Huh? And I was teaching them, they were not hearing the word. They wanted to now come and throng on me. So that when they now tear my shirts and each of them take their portion home, that's when the power has come upon them. Because then I use, I just walked past people and they were healed of cancers and all. It is not, it's because of the word that is implanted in me. And not because of my garment. Rend your heart, not your garment. The power of God is available for everyone if you believe. Yes. Everyone. Look at our attitude. We are not about our master's business. We are not about our master's business. We profess we love Jesus. But we are not disciplined. So if Jesus should look at that, I tell you it will be very strict. But there's something he has done. So the scripture we're reading, that's what he has done. I just want to show you. Jesus said, doubt nothing, believe everything. Prophet John was saying something the other day. You know, and it's something that he used to, he used to hear some, some people used to even call my father, talk to my father about it. This one there is so strange, your son. He said he was prophesied about before he was born. Oh, even that one cries too much. Yet for so many years, I waited on the Lord so that he would refine me. Is it not painful? What is the point then? There was a time I told Jesus. I came to the auditorium. I said, you don't believe. You just followed me for a miracle. You don't believe the teachings I'm giving you. And I was weeping. You know, miracles, the Lord has set the systems of the earth and the heavens to run accordingly. Anytime a miracle happens, it means we have seized the system he's put in place to run. Because a miracle is something that is not supposed to happen, but it has happened. So, assuming you are not supposed to give birth until your 45th day, the 45th birthday, so that it becomes more or less strange for everybody because when you are almost at your dead end, your womb is almost gone. That is when the Lord decides to refresh your womb for you to give birth to three children. So everybody will marvel because the Bible says that, you know, what the Lord has done, okay, is marvelous. It's marvelous to our what? Eyes. So whatever he does is marvelous to our eyes. Now, what is marvelous to our eyes? It's not because a miracle happened. It's because you were not supposed to give birth. The process of giving birth naturally was interrupted. It was not given until the time when your you are past your, your age of childbearing. That's when God decides to refresh your womb so that it becomes a miracle. Now, anytime that thing happens, the system that God put in your, in your womb as a woman to go through that when you are 45 to 48, you now cease to menstruate. That has been interrupted. So, miracles are the interruption of the process, either of divine or the spirit world. Or the natural order. Just that the spirit world is different from the natural world. So let's say the natural order. So somebody is the managing director. And the managing director will be promoted five years later or six years later. After being a managing director to manage the company for over five years. Even studies shows in the um, in business orientation and entrepreneurship orientation that when you set up a manager for the manager to be able to understand the entire establishment, the manager must build on the business for five years to understand the business intelligence of the entire place. Then you give the manager, the general manager, ten, five additional years to grow it. But we are hateful people. So the, the moment it is one year, we, de we demand answers. But that is the formative years where we are supposed to put structures in place and enforce it. Otherwise, when it escalates, there will be issues. So you, when you, you, you talk about business intelligence, you know those things. It takes time for 
people to build structures. So it took God time, six days, to finish, to work all everything and enter into rest and cause the earth to run what he has done. So the earth is running what he has done in years. Because that day he used this, the earth is using years, thousands of years to make one day. That's what it means. So anytime there is a miracle, the process is interrupted. But what God wants is that he wants you to feed on the word. So you use the word to superimpose. You impose the word of God over the earthly process and bring results. So you fed on the word of God for four years and the rest of the years ahead of you, you put all the word of God into place. So be a hearer and a doer at the same time. Do not be hearers only when you get out of here, you forget. No. Be a hearer and implement what you have heard. How many of us have implemented tightly the principle of tight, which is the master fortune for divine relevance? The principle of finding financial fortune. How many of us have instituted, you know, first fruit in our system so that from the beginning of January like this, you begin to save some small money so that it can take care of your expenses for the whole January that you are using for first fruit. How many of us have done that? I thought about it. I went ahead, explained in details how many of us did it. That is the doing part of the word. And that ensures that there's a relevant part of you. Jesus was the first fruit of God. The firstborn of all creation. The firstborn from the dead. God sowed Jesus into the earth. That means that God had provision. He had thought about it. Look at how many prophets prophesied about Jesus is coming and dying and all of that. God had already made provisions for that. He is a plans man. God is a plans guy. He fulfills purpose and purpose is in plan. If you don't plan, how do you know the purpose? He subjected the whole world into hope. That means there's a plan, a blueprint he's following. And he's giving all those words in the world. That is why when somebody is teaching different from the blueprint, because he showed us the blueprint. When I was in heaven, and he took me to his mountain where he dwells, and entered into that mountain with the an angel. When I went inside, I understood the plans of God, what his predestination, what actually it means. He had been talking to me about it, but this time around, he made me see it. How it meant. When I came to the earthworm, I saw people where I recognized that I saw them there, but not as human beings. But I saw them as lights. I saw them as what? Lights. Illuminating. And the rays were connected to each other and unto the throne. I understood the reason why we are stones at the altar. I understood a lot of things that I had read. If I hadn't read the Bible and I saw this, I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have made any any, any kind of significant impact on my life because you don't know but because I was there I had covered a lot so certain revelation will not come to you except you cover what is given if you have not covered what is given why does he what, what is his concern of revealing to you what is not covered what is not what is being given you have not covered what has not been given you even what is given you have not covered what, is, what has not been given you you will not be able to understand it that's the doing part of the word a doer of the word. A doer of the word. Are you a doer of the word? Are you a doer of the word? That's why people live their lives not in conformity to what has been what done in heaven. There are many people, their marriages, the people they married are wrong marriages. I told the apostle six, seven years ago. This is, the Lord took me and I was seeing. He said, in the end time, there are a lot of mismatch. Because people are married out of their feelings. They say, I love you. It's feelings, not love. You know, you're talking I'm in love. My heart, you're breaking it. It's in a pants of us and a prophet. When you were giving your heart carelessly like that, was I there? So you align your life to the divine ways of God. Not what you feel presently. No. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Understand the will of God and the word of God for your life. Even though the Lord called me and knew me from my mother's womb, he has tested this vessel to know how you keep my word. To know how when I speak, what you do with it. 
I don't joke with the word of God spoken unto me. So when the word is given unto me, I don't joke with it at all. But I see how God himself, potent words from the excellent glory given to you, and you handle it with carelessness. Then I say, ah! These things that are precious in his sight. Angels don't joke with it. How can you, a child of God, joke with the word of God? So glorious a word like this. No. You can't do that. You can't do that. Let the word of God lead your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Sure. Thank you, Lord. Clap your hands and appreciate Jesus in our midst. Let the word of God lead your life in Jesus' name. Amen. I went to a crusade. I was going to pray for somebody. A pregnant woman who had been pregnant for about three, four years. I was going to pray. There were other prophets there. As soon as I started to speak the word of God, they said, Madam, bring three bananas tomorrow. If you like, go and bring it right now. Do something for me. This long, long prayer to Norway. I was about to speak. So I looked at them like this. And they were, yes, yes. I looked at them like this. I said, Father, I thank you for your word. For the word of God is supreme. You shall be given birth before you bring the banana in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And tomorrow was going to be Friday. The day after was going to be Friday. She shall give birth before 12 o'clock. But then we will be doing the crusade. The crusade, we do it, I think, uh, yes. So you give birth before we will start the crusade. It was about, you know, we'll start about around four or five. And so my father was there. My spiritual father was there. And so she left with her husband. So Friday, exactly somewhere 10, she started feeling funny. Contractions started happening. At the greatest speed, they took her to the hospital. Exactly 12.45, she delivered. No way. <laughs> Hallelujah. But she had gone to buy, uh, the husband had gone to buy the banana. And when they were coming at 3.4, they were going to bring the bananas to the other prophets so that they pray for them. But I was the one ministry. And I sent the prophets there. And they were supposed to be sons. And my father was amazed. <laughs> he said, that's right, that's the word. So we were there, preaching was going on. The man was running from wherever they took the wife, hospital. People had had dreams that the woman was going to die when she was going to deliver. They ran, himself and his sister, to the, to the crusade grounds. We had won souls. Miracles were happening. I never touched anybody. Just prayer. Just by the declaration of the word of God in prayer. The man ran. Man of God. No. The trousers was even torn. My wife has, del my wife has delivered. My wife has Hold on, hold on. Give him water. Because he was running. Give him water. Give him water. Hold on. The whole church. He, the whole people. It was not a, a church. It was a crusade. And then, I said, and what is it? They give, he said, praise the Lord. My, my wife was pregnant for almost four years. But now the prophet said, he said, the prophet, other prophet said, we should bring bananas. And one of them was the one reading my Bible for me. So we went to buy the banana. When I came back, my wife, she was almost dying. We took her to the hospital, not knowing the baby was coming. She delivered as early 12.45. And I, I, when I finished every arrangement, I took a car and said, I must come to the crusade before they close. He took, he took a car, but about two hour journey to the place where we were doing the crusade and came to testify. And after the testimony, miracles, was exhortation of the word of God. He has glorified his word above all his names. Anyone that seeks to glorify the word of God, you will never go down. Be a hearer and a doer. You hear the word, do it. And people hear the word, they put it down. Said the man of God has spoken. But you see, the word of God is the supreme thing. And when you hear the word of God from the excellent glory, there's no confusion with the word. 
The Bible says, I put a stumbling block, block of offense. Anybody that you fall by that, you have fallen. And to whom it will fall upon, it will grind you. Let it fall upon you so that you are grinded. But when you stumble at it, the word, there will be consequences. I gave people word for over six years. Over six years. That this was going to happen. I'm sure that when usually you are there and you remember them, you believe away, but there's some kind of, you know, mixed feelings. Oh, it was just when the prophet was feeling good. Today, we are living in the reality of the word of God. That means the word of God has manifested and we have seen the glory of the word of God. The word. Exalt the word. And the Lord will bless you. Now, in the time we are living in here, is the time of exaltation of the word of God. So when Zachariah says that the word of the Lord came to him, he said the word of the Lord of hosts came to him, saying, I am zealous for Zion with a great zeal. We want to understand what that great zeal is about. And he says, I'm, with great favor, I, have, I am zealous for her. That's here the Lord. I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. So I will return. It's talking about Jesus. He had come first and he is coming again. So I will return to Zion. Because they were in the period of the second temple. And to them, the second temple had already been built. So the third temple is the one in session. So they were not prophesying about the second temple. That means the, coming, the first coming of Jesus. Which was the second temple revelation. But he was going to put his body down. That is why if any man be in Christ, you are a new creation. But you live in the second temple. You live from Adam temple, which is the first one, the Gentile. Unto the second temple, which is buried and the new one, which is what? The immortal one. is the one we are looking at here. That is what is subjected into hope. It's subject to hope. We hope for the immortality, immortality the immortal body. Now, he, yes, sit well and hear well. Madam of That is the agenda of God. Where he uses temples to describe the full agenda of himself. So leave the courtyard. It's been given unto the Gentiles to trample underfoot. So Jesus is living in the temples. You are temples. Temples that have been washed. Temples that have been built out of wilderness. You were translated from the kingdom of darkness unto light. But the same body. But it has been washed. To carry the spirit unto the time appointed for you so that you are changed. Alasu. So, I don't know whether the building of the third temple is ironic. It's figurative, in other words. I hope you understand me. But we are hoping so. And whatever it is, even more so, it is the city of truth. Now, hear this word. I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth. Shall be called the city of truth. Is it this one that everybody is going there? Where schemes and things are happening there. Is that the city of truth? And in any, in any case, he's not talking about the entire landmark of Israel. He's talking about Jerusalem. Now, do you know Jerusalem is the capital of Israel? Now, including Samaria and the entire place. Which shared borders with the sea. To the Zebulon side. To Issachar. And to the north, Benjamin and, and Ephraim. All of, all of that landmark was Jerusalem, uh, or was Israel. But Jerusalem was where David was on enthroned king first. Then the people around, the other tribes, he was enthroned. The Judah people's eyes were open first. They got revelation about Judah, about David. And they brought David to be their king. That was the first time somebody from Judah was becoming a king. The king was actually given to Benjamin. The Benjamites. Saul was a Benjamite. The least of the tribe, he said. And was now being the king. And God rejected because now the time had been fulfilled. So David was enthroned king in Hebron. For some time, 
before the entire people of Israel had now heard that, no, David is prospering with the people of, you know, the Jewish. So let's all go. The Israelites, the 12 tribes, they had that, you know, 11, 10 tribes went and called for David and then crowned him king over all Israel. But the capital city of Israel was Jerusalem. And that's where the city of the great king was. So the Lord now decided that I will now choose because I've chosen in the dispensation of the fullness of time. I've chosen only Judah to rule. So every one of the tribes of Israel must become a tribe of Judah. You need to be accepted in the tribe of Judah and come and leave, leave the Samarians and the places the Gentiles have missed and come and live in Jerusalem. But that Jerusalem shall be exalted above all else. So when you are reading the Bible, you see those kind of things. It's a prophecy. He's not talking about this one. But this one is the shadow. So he said, Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Who is the king? Jesus. But David sat upon the throne. Because if your father doesn't sit the throne, your father is not a king. How can you become a king? So Jesus, actually in the flesh, comes in the order of what his father, David, a king. So Jesus must also sit upon the throne as a king. Like Solomon being the son of David physically. So it becomes a prototype. That's why Solomon was given wisdom above all men on earth at the time. So that Jesus himself is the embodiment of wisdom. The Bible says God has dealt with that, the wisdom of God. So Jesus now is the wisdom. It was a fraction he gave to Solomon because he was the physical son of what? But Jesus is the Lord and he's the, phys- he's the spiritual son of the lineage of David in Judah. The first man from Judah to become king. That's the understanding. And that is why Jesus is a Jew. And we all want uh, Gentiles everywhere. Unless you become a Jew spiritually, you are not part of the kingdom. That's what the book of Romans chapter 2 talks about that. That is not the one who is physically Jew who is a Jew. But the one who is spiritual Jew, he is the one who is a Jewish. The real Jewish are the spiritual Jewish. The ones who have come into Christ. Are you in Christ? Clap your hands and appreciate Jesus. Am I talking to people here now? Good. The word of God is sweet. And let me now begin to now settle matters here before I pray with you and close. So the Bible says, that's here the Lord. Old men and old women shall again sit, again sit. Because in David's time, old men and all of them came to Jerusalem to now hail the king. They shall again sit. This is a prophecy of Zachariah who is actually at the second temple prophesying. Obviously, it is not about the second temple he's prophesying because he was futuristically positioning the word of God. Oh, let's so pray this on this. So he says, they shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem and each one with his staff in his hand. That's rulership, authority. Because of the great age and the streets, so you see them, you see the great and beard. So that is what spiritual God opens. You see some of us like old men with gray beard. Almost as if he's sweeping the ground. That's what it means. And this old age. The street of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in a street and the generation has come. The way they look, that's how they shall be represented. And the Bible said, that's, so that's here the Lord of hosts. If it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of these people in these days. So if it is marvelous, it's a prophecy. If it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnant in these days, hear the word of God. Will it also be marvelous in my eyes? The Lord is saying, will it also be marvelous in my eyes? Because I did it. Hear the Lord of hosts. I know about it. I did it. Behold, I saved my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. You know the western people. How dangerous and evil they can be. I will bring them back because he scattered the people of in Jezreel. Remember, in Jezreel, he scattered the people. In Low Ruhama, the people were not his people. Now hear the word. Okay. And I will bring them back and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. In the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people. They shall be my people. So now he's talking about the fullness of what times. In the restoration of all things. Now hear this. I said, they shall be my people and I will be their God. In truth and in righteousness. In truth and in righteousness. In absolute truth and righteousness. No games and gimmicks. 
No. The truth of the word of God. That's here the Lord of hosts. Let your hands be strong. You, you, have been, you who have been hearing in these days, as you are hearing the word of God in these days, let your hands be strong. That means he's talking about prosperity. You shall prosper and make it big. These words by the mouth of the prophets, not one, prophets, who spoke in the day the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts. So when the foundation of the, of the, of the revelation of Christ, when the foundation of his temple was laid, the second temple is, has something to do with Christ. That was why it was entrusted into the hands of the governor, Zerubbabel, for the prophetic word that Zerubbabel oh, shall come with the shout of grace. Grace. Two graces. From grace. So you are saved by grace through faith. And when you come into Jesus, you have come into grace. And then you develop in grace. So the Bible says, grow in grace. It also is a representation of one that cleanses and release the people to be sanctified on the platform. So there's one in the midst of the people who controls the crowd in the convocation, but he brings the people to the platform for revelation, for unveiling, for restoration. You may not understand, but I'm answering people's visions. Oh, So the one in the midst, he has a symbolism of two. Because he says, and I'll gather all of them and make them one. Hey! These words by the mouth of the prophet who spoke in the day the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts that the temple might be built. For before these days there were no wages for man nor hire for beasts. There was no peace from the enemy for whoever went out or came in. So it was not said that I will reward them and my reward is with me and I'm carrying my reward. The real work started when Jesus came and established everything and went back and said, now I'm coming back again, but with my reward with me. For I set all men, everyone against his neighbor. But now there were wars against wars, rumors of wars. And the Bible said, but now I will not treat the remnant of these people as in the former days. See the Lord of wars, for the seed shall be prosperous. And the seed, Jesus is the seed, and all of us in him as the seed. And the Bible says, and the vine shall give its fruit. The ground shall give an increase. The heaven shall give their due. So this is the time where this is orchestrated. It's happening without any request of anybody. He says, they shall give their due. And the heaven shall give their due. That means the heaven is commanded. Ah, by Shapalaga. Heaven is under obligation to do it. Ah, they are obliged to do it. They can't stop it. And here I come commanding the heavens. Do what our boss has spoken yeah. unto the people who hands are strong. Yeah. If you believe, if you shout amen, I receive something happen yeah. for you. And I receive. And I will call the remnant of these people to possess all things. It shall come to pass that just as you were a case among this is the part I want you to understand. Just as you were a case among the nations. He's talking about the dispersed sons of Israel. The ten tribes that were scattered abroad abroad the length and breadth of the whole world. Mingling with the Gentiles. When they are coming they shall come with the Gentiles together who have known Christ. Who are not my people but now they are my people. So the Bible says that Paradabah to possess all things how many things to possess how many things oh satalabayanish and god who is spirit is making promise to people who are physical beings they are flesh but they have spirit indwelling of him so it's not only things of the spirit it's also things of this nature but you must be able to let your spirit carry your body along so your body doesn't swim in corruption so your body Show this corruption into, in, into things that are incorruptible. Now hear this. Oh house of Judah. He says to, to possess all, the, all this. And it shall come to pass that just as you were a case among the nations. Oh house of Judah. And house of Israel. 
So I will save you and you shall be a blessing. Do not fear. Let your hands be strong. For thus you the Lord of hosts. Just as I determined to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath. This is the statement I want you to understand. I was determined to punish you when your fathers worship idols and they provoke me to wrath, to anger. I was determined to punish you. My anger was kindled. My anger rekindled. And I was not ready to retreat. I was ready to punish them. So he said, just as I was ready to punish them when your fathers provoked me to wrath. Say the Lord of hosts, the captain of hosts. Say the Lord, he says that. So again in these days, ha, I am determined to do good. I am determined to do good to Jerusalem. Hey, hey, glory. Thank you. Remember that Jerusalem is now occupied by only Jews. But there is a call to every part of the world to come into Jerusalem. So he will do good to Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem that is from above. And to the house of Judah. Because the house of Judah is in Jerusalem. So if I'm determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, he said, Do not fear. Ah, Masakapaya. A labro soka, a group of people from nations uh, may try to put you down, but I am determined to do good to you. Man. Just as I was determined to punish your fathers when Man. they sin against me, I'm also in likewise determined to do good. Man. When the fathers sin, God did not spare them, He punished them. He scattered them, lent a bread over the cross of the whole world, and uh, they perished from their inheritance. Uh, but this time around, He's also determined uh, to do good. Uh, so that means that uh, when they, uh, they try to plead, uh, Lord, we are sorry. The Lord said, no, I'm determined to punish you. In these last days too, you may say, Lord, uh, hey, I don't deserve, but the Lord said, I'm determined to bless you. Uh, you say, Lord, I'm not making money. He says, I'm determined to bless you. Uh, let your hands be strong only. Uh, uh, I hope people are understanding the revelation of the word of God. I came that in the poor of this atosan, in the fullness of the dispensation of restoration of all things. It is no longer what you think. It's no longer what the good you have done. The Bible says, I'm determined. My determination, this is God's determination, not man's determination. I am determined as the Lord of hosts to do good unto you, to prosper you, to bring you to an expected end. I will prosper you somebody. You just be obedient to me and to the word of grace I've spoken unto you. You will be rich. It's not by any effort of yours. You will shall be Rich. Only speak the word. Only speak the word. Somebody says, speak the word. Declare, say, I am rich. I am rich. He is determined to make me rich. He's determined to make me rich. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me finish this. Thank you, my father. When the time comes, you have strange Mara visions. Basoto. Let me finish this. Thank you, Lord. Now, are you understanding the word of God with grace? Yes, sir. This word is seasoned with salt. Sabadabadabasha. He says, these things are the things you shall do. Now, I am determined to make you rich. These are the things you shall do. Hear them. That means this is the only doctrine he's given us. It's a prophecy of old. This prophecy is more than 2,200 or so years. Because 500 years later before Jesus came. And we have spent almost, we are not yet 2,000, it's 1,009 something. Or, yeah, 1,009 something. Okay. So it's about 2,390 or 400 and something. Yes, this prophecy was written, was spoken by the prophet. In our days, somebody has come to a realization of this prophecy. Amen. You are living in the reality of this statement. Amen. Please, am I hearing somebody here? Sir. You who you think you are barren, prepare. Mm. For triplet is determined to your womb. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. Shalabadosha. <laughs> you, you think your age is advanced. Your womb is renewed for strength. Amen. The officer on word, Danobehu Ahenasa. Is that what I'm hearing? Shadabokote Vese Kaprata Legis. Professor. So far, this is so sick. The one who thinks he's not a sub shooter, Hal Talaba. You think that you have not been able to even trim a sugar cane. Let me tell you something. Raka Pasakataya. You will be a prophetic encyclopedia. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. Hey! hey. Shakapaya. You will shoot for arrows. Amen. Not to kill, but to create. I, I wish you understand my word. Amen. Satala Bahaya. 
My words are coded a bit. So the Bible says here, it says, these are, these are the things you shall do. And it is colon. Speak to each man the truth to his neighbor. Listen, that means spread the word. What I recall you to do is that there are other elects. They are among the people. They don't know. I've forgiven them their sins, but they don't know yet. They've not received the forgiveness. Go and speak to them. Speak to your neighbors. Your immediate neighbors, the people you sit in the offices with, in your homes with, your houses with, places with. Speak to them. On the street, you sit in buses with. You go to work with. Speak to them. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. The truth is the word. And he says what? Give judgment in your gates for truth. And give judgment in your gates for truth. Justice and peace. That means men pen tembuaten. Justice. Be fair and firm. Be fair and firm. Justice. Don't, don't sentence somebody to death without hearing the person defend himself. Don't conclude on any matter without first of all hearing from the person. The Bible says that we should judge ourselves whether we stand or we fall. But we shouldn't condemn ourselves. The judgment is unto righteousness. But what you are doing is not good. Please stop. Let's all worship God. That's the judgment he's talking about. Speak the word of God to people. Now hear this. But do not join people to condemn yourselves. So give judgment in your gates, your council of rule, where you have been placed to function in the church setting, where you are functioning in your house, in your business. Speak. Give judgment in your gate for truth, justice, and peace. Let none of you think evil of your heart. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor. Your neighbor is the person you are in the same kingdom with. And do not love a false oath. Let your yes be yes. You know, be no. That's what it means. Gossip, lies is abhorred. For all these are the things I hate, say the Lord. If you have to enjoy in the season, He doesn't require nothing. What He requires is do these things. He spoke to them about it. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, That's here the Lord of hosts. The first of the fourth month, the first of the fifth month, the first of the seventh month, and the first of the tenth month shall be joy and gladness. No longer shall it be sanctimonious and papa fire. It shall rather be what? Enjoyment. It shall rather be with joy. It shall be for me a feast. He said, it shall be joy, gladness, and cheerful what? Feast. It shall be a festival of eating and drinking because it's in the harvest season. Don't stop the fasting. Don't stop the prayer. But let it be for me and to me what? A feast. If you are poor, how do you feast? Somebody you are rich. Amen. Your amen doesn't sound like people believe. Amen. Shout I receive. I receive. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody that things have turned. Things have changed, Joe. Oh. Amen. We are in new day, Lord Shalemaha. We are in a new dispensation. This is not a time to fight whether we should prosper or not. No, 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 thousand times no. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Amen. Hey! hey. Let the dead bury their dead. We yes. shall prophesy. We shall prophesy. We shall be rich. Amen. Hey, Parabaya. Receive prosperity of everything. Receive. Prosperity in all things. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey. Hey. Hey, the season has come. Kabaya. The time of the Lord has come. Yes. Hey, Paradosh. Hey. Let's hear the word of God. Thank now. you, Jesus. Cheerful feast for the house of Judah. Hear the word for the house of Judah. So when you read this, you might think, oh, are you, a, are you part of Judah? The people did not understand. The people did not understand. He says, therefore love truth and peace. Live peacefully among each other. That's here the Lord of the, Lord of the host. People shall yet come. So there are people who have been ordained. They shall yet come. When you now start with this kind of enjoyment, then the people... Who are yet to come will start coming. Okay. Okay. Because you'll be speaking to them and they will see the blessing and they will start coming. Mm. Hey, hey! The feet of the tabernacle shall be glorious. Amen. It shall be beautiful. Amen. Share the spirit of the Lord. You, the Lord. feet is here now. Hey, you are here now. I'm here now. That's you, the Lord. Hi, Abosha. 
the inhabitant of one city shall go to another saying let us continue to pray let us continue to go and pray before the Lord this is where you set up tabernacle give to the Lord sacrifices because you people are feasting and the people will say let's come and join them for let's go and pray and seek the Lord of hosts I myself will also will go also yes many peoples and, and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord so strong nations like China like the US like people did not know Jesus shall come strong nations they are strong in their will but they shall come they shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem among the people who formed Jerusalem the new city of God and to pray before the Lord now hear the word this is where I want you to jump up and just cut up and I'm going to review something he says the 23rd verse he says that's here the Lord of hosts in those days 10 men from every language of the nations if you like count all the languages of the earth and imagine 10 people from each of the language and 10 is not just 10 10 represent the people is a remnant of the people who are coming but he gave the ten to number them ten men from every language of the nation shall grab the sleeve of a Jewish man who do you think the Jewish man is he. saying let us go with you as you are going to China to do business India Pakistan, all those places, Japan, US, Caribbeans to do business. They say, let's go with you to the place to worship. Let's go with you to the place. For we have heard that God is with you. Hey! For we have what? They've heard it. That what? God is with me. They've not seen it, but they've what? I said they've what? Heard it. They didn't see, they heard that God. It's just hearing. It could be true, it could not be true. But they believe that, mm, as I've seen you, are you a Christian? They say, I'm a Christian. Ha! God calls you the Jewish man. In case people are wondering, what is this man talking about? This scripture, he belongs to the Jews. This scripture, yeah. The Jews themselves, physically right now, they are Pharisees. They don't believe Christ. I say, hey, God will wait until they believe him. You don't know what you're talking about. God is not talking about physical things. He's talking about spiritual Jewish here. Now, in the book of Romans chapter 2, from the verse number 20, let me read it. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly. So the one who is an outward Jewish, who is a Pharisee now living in a Jewish town, is not the Jew he's talking about. But, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly. Who is the one Jew inwardly here? Me. Do you know why you are in what Jew? Because Christ Jesus, who is a Jew, is living in you. Hallelujah. He has adopted you to his father and you cry out, Abba. Thank father. you, Lord. The king of the Jews is in me. That's why when they crucified the king of the Jews, it's not only the people of the Jews physically. Mm. It was the king of the Jews shall be called from everywhere. Hallelujah. Those who are not my people, now they are my people. Yeah. Shalabaya. This is the reason why Ezekiel was told, bring sticks together and bind them. Throw them into the sea. Bring stones together. Bind them. He says, so shall it be that I will now command my people from around the world and the peoples who are not my people to come together and they shall be together as one. Let me read unto you another scripture in the book of Ephesians as I'm concluding now. Hey, Baro Satan, this revelation is too deep. Oh, the book of Ephesians chapter number 2. Oh, my father, Maradabaya. From the verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Listen, created in Christ Jesus. So if you don't understand this scripture, you don't understand this one. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in, him, in them. Therefore, remember that you were once Gentiles in the flesh. In the flesh you were Gentiles. But no more, in the, no more Gentiles in the spirit, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands that at the time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope without God in the world but now but now, now glory. Hey, things have changed oh. yeah announcements have been made glory, glory. 
It's like the day you came from Ghana and went to the US and you applied for a green card and your green card application was to apply for Christ. And when you applied for Christ, you were there when the announcement came in your box. You are qualified. This is your green card. Now you are the citizen of United States of America. That is the news I'm talking about. Yeah. Even on the earth, look at the way you will jump and say, glory! I'm now a citizen of the US. When I give birth, my children are US born. They shall be paid every month. Are you hearing my point? Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. Yes. Hey. Hey. Let me go ahead. Bada 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 bada. He says, but now, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off has been brought near by the blood of his Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made both wow. one. He has made both Jew and, Jew and Israelite and Greek one. Who has broken down the middle wall of separation. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. So Jesus in the second temple abolished in his flesh. The enmity, uh, uh, the partition that was partitioning her, uh, the Maradosha, he abolished in his flesh. And then he says, What? Uh, the wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh, the enmity, uh, that is the law of commandments, where the law was given to only the people of Israel by flesh. But he has abolished the law, so as what? Containing the ordinance, so as to create in himself one new man from the two. That's making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, therefore putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and to those who were near. And these are Ephesians who were blind house. And Paul is preaching to them this word. And the Bible says, For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father, both of the Jew and Greek. In Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek nor Hispanic nor Indian or whoever. But the Bible says here, now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God having been built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in God. In whom you also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Somebody, you are a spiritual Jew now. Unto whom the prophecy came to her. We are living in the reality of this prophecy. Receive you if you believe. I receive. Now to conclude everything, let's go to the book of Labra Taba, Hosea. I'm concluding the book of Hosea chapter 1. The verse number 3, quickly. So he went and took Goma, the daughter of Dibli, it was God who said to Hosea, right? You yes, start sir. from the verse one quickly for me. Please, the word of finish. the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of Beeri. I have taught you the entire Hosea book. There's the time to wake up. Let's go ahead. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, son of Beeri, yes. in the days of Isaiah, yes. Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Yes. And in the days of Jeroboam. And it came to pass in the kings of Judah. Now let's go ahead. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Yes. When the Lord began to speak by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Yes. Go, take yourself a wife of Halotry. So and take kill. yourself a wife from Halotry. So Halotry means people were worshipping other gods. But take a wife. This is actually the spiritual symbol. So he's talking about physical symbols. I'm explaining them as they mean in the physical symbol. So go and take a wife. Okay? Yes. From the hollow tree. Oba Jamamboni. Oba Oye adulteress. Oba. Do you understand? Prostitution. Prostitution. Oba Oba Jamai. Okwa Kotchen. Ben Mabini Neye Bibia. Ochen Oya no Afano. Now, so we are not going to worry. But men man in jail, your man born, on course one more. Because who can worry your man born in a easy so be jail? She, who knew her from? A kobaba. A boy, your man born, a prostitute wife, can sleep with ten men at a time. In one day, she can sleep with more, because that's what she do for a living. She's been doing it for a living. She does that for a living. We are now coming to hear what God, who God is, how love. 
I taught you this word. I explained in a dimension to you. Let's go deeper. Go, take yourself a wife of harlotry. Yes. And children of harlotry. And children of harlotry. And man, a man, I'll be one, come here, for prostitution be what? I want you to hear the word. Now, let's go ahead. For the land has committed great harlotry. Yes. By departing from the Lord. So, you see, so the land has, you know, committed great harlotry by departing from, they went to worship idols. And the three Hebrew people said, we will not worship. Now, yeah, yes, go, let's go, let's go. So he went and took Goma. But do you know that the prophet that God has ordained for the season when Elijah was now, you know, the Bible says was petitioning against the prophet. says, I've ordained prophets, 7,000 and more, who have not bowed their knee to Baal. That means this prophet did not corrupt themselves. And again, the 144,000 who are Jesus' groomsmen never corrupted themselves. So the Bible said they never knew women. They were virgins. Let's go. I will explain like terms to you. That's why you didn't understand the word initially when he was teaching it. But I will explain things to you so that you can understand. Let's go ahead, Apostle. Verse 3. Yes. So he went unto Goma, the daughter of Dibli, and she conceived and bore him a son. Yes. Then the Lord said to him, Yes. Call his name Jezreel. Call the name of the son that, uh, you know, Goma has given birth to. The daughter of Dibli. Goma. Remember, the word Goma is the prostitute. And that Goma, the mother is Diblim. I guess she's also a prostitute. And then, give birth with her. And she first bore a son and he called his name what? Jezreel. And God said, call his name Jezreel. His agenda is playing out. So when God is the one who is calling your children's name, know that there is an agenda he's fulfilling with them. Be careful how you divert them with your own mindset. My grandfather told me that I should be a lawyer. I was not able to be a lawyer, so I fixed it in my son. He has his own destiny. And the, the guy likes engineering. Now, let's go ahead, Apostle. Call his name Jezreel, for in a little while I will avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu. So I will avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel. On the house of Jehu. So the one who massacred Jezreel. The one who committed atrocity with Jezreel. I will now command that bloodshed to come upon the household of Jehu. And Jehu was anointed by Elijah to what? To be ordained as a captain to kill Jezebel. And later on they were also destroyed. So God doesn't want the blood of evil people to come on the hands of his children. David could not build God a temple because his blood was his hands were stained with blood. The one who was the king did not fight. He did not fight. So there are people who build houses of God. They are not fighting with devils on the field. Clap your hands, stamp your feet. You can't build house for God. You can't get revelations. There are people who are sent to do dirty works. When we speak, people don't understand. He read it, read it. For in a little while, I will avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu. Yes. And bring an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. So I will bring, imagine, I will bring an end to the kingdom of Israel when they were one with Judah. So there was a whole kingdom. God says, no, I'll bring to an end that kingdom. And I will raise Judah myself to be a kingdom. So that kingdom of Christ Jesus will be king, the kingdom over all the other kingdoms. So the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus is over all the kingdoms of this world. Hey! Hey! Let's finish it. I'm done. Verse 5. Yes. It shall come to pass in that day. Yes. That I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. So I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Jezreel means God sold. He sold or souls. It's a place where God sold his agenda. Now let's go at Apostle. And she conceived again and bore a daughter. And she, then, So Goma conceived again and bore a daughter. Then God said to him, Yes. Call her name Lo Ruhama. She was a daughter. He said, call her name Lo Ruhama. So number one, understand that the one who gave birth. So Zion and daughters of Zion. Now let's go. He gave birth to Lo Ruhama. 
For I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel. So Lord Ruhama means they will beg me, but I will no longer have mercy on Israel. Yes. But I'll but I will utterly take them away. I will utterly take them away. So there will not be anything like Israel, ten tribes again, and all of that. But let's see it. Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah. Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah. That is the city of the great king. From here, the prophet should have known that God will raise a priest, a high priest from there. But still, they did not know. That's why Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. But he knew it. Now, let's go ahead. Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah. We will save them by the Lord their God. We will save them by the Lord their God. So the king of the Jews is their God. And here, why was the entire Jew people blinded by the fact that the Messiah they were waiting for, this is the proof, was supposed to be some military person. But here the promise of God to them it was what? And will not save them by bow. He will not save them by bow. Nor by sword or battle. Nor by sword, nor battle. He's not a military man. Mm. By horses or horsemen. He will not sit on horses or horsemen or chariot and going to fight. He will be like Solomon. Solomon did not fight nobody. Mm. No fight. It's a spiritual kingdom. Now, let's go to the last one. I finish. Verse 8. Yes. Up to 11 verse. Let's go quickly. Now, when she had weaned Lord Ruhama, she conceived a boy. So, when Lord Ruhama had now stopped drinking milk and was matured in bondage, there was a conception of who? Of uh -huh. verse 9. Then God said, He conceived another name. son. Yes. Yes. Lo Ami. And he called his name Lo Ami. For you are not my people. And Lo Ami means you are not my people. And I will not be your God. And I will not be your God. Let's go to the 10. So yeah. Lord Ami means you are not my people. So the people are not his people. All the Israelites were scattered among the Gentiles, including the Gentiles. They were not his people. But let's go to the 10 verse. Let's see it. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Yet, even though I've said this, yet the number of Israel, but if you have seized the people from being your people, then they are finished. But Judah is only a small place. But he said, yet, Judah is only one tribe. Yet the number of Israel, the whole Israel, shall still be as the son of the sea as I promised Abraham. What God is this? What is he trying to communicate? Now, let's finish it. Which cannot be measured or numbered. We cannot be measured nor numbered. And yes, it, go. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. In the place where it was said to them. In the same place where it was said to them. You are not my people. You are not my people. There it shall be said to them. That place shall be said to them. You are sons of the living God. You are sons of the living God. Hey! Hey! The people are scattered already and they've mingled with the Gentiles. You can't even see them again. Now he says they are all with the Gentiles, sons of the living God. Now let's finish it now. The only way is that the Jewish person who brings all of them into himself to submit to God is Christ. The only way. Now let's finish it. Let's see it today. Then the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together. So that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together. To who? And appoint for themselves one head. And appoint for themselves one head. And they shall come up out of the land. And they shall come up out of the land. For great will be the day of Jezreel. Great will be the day of Jezreel. Remember, Jezreel is their mother. The Zion. The Israel. The Israel that houses all of them together in Zion. And Zion is the great, the, the city of the great king. Zion, the whole of Jerusalem is called Zion. But the whole of Israel is not called Zion. Unless you come to Judah, where the temple of God is and worship, then you are Zionite. But God will gather all of them together. In what? In Jerusalem. In the city of the great king. They shall appoint one head. This word is fulfilled. In 1948, they appointed one leader now. And they shall come up out of the land. So from there, they shall come out of the land. 
For great is the day of Jezreel. And Jezreel means God sowed it. It matured. The time of maturity is what he's talking about. And the Jezreel said, that where God spoke the word and broke the bow is called the valley of Jezreel. Now, that is the place of Scar. The same place that he divided them, that same place was where the cross was lifted. And the Bible says, when I'm lifted, I will draw all men to myself. That's the same place proclamation was made. The land of Jezreel. Glory. Am I talking to people here now? Hey, am I talking to people here now? Shakabaya. For great is the day of Jezreel. Moses spoke about this. Hey, ya ba do shakabaya. Hey, ya ya. Hey, ya ya. Kora ba hizelamani. Zebro kota vezeleheski. That's the same place it was said. So the season we have entered in, that is why we prophesy to you the gathering together of the saints. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, the verse number 9 to 10, he says, Have you made known to us the mystery of his will? This is his will. According to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, the times, I told you that each event is fixed with the time, times of event. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. So these people have dead and gone long time ago, he will gather all of them together in one, in Christ. So that is why I told you that the people of God who have died and gone to be with the Lord, they are waiting at a place called Holy Place. Even the people who died in the tribulation, the Bible said they were at the altar, the base of the altar. Revelation 7. That ends my discussion here today. Next week I'll continue. Shatalaba. Let's go ahead quickly. The verse number 13. Revelation 7 from the verse number 13. No, start from the verse 9 for me quickly. Remember the Revelation chapter 7 from the verse 5 to 8. He lists all the tribes and leave out one tribe. What was the tribe? The tribe of Dan. There's a mystery about it. I'll teach you some time to come. Now, let's quickly start from 9. Verse, quickly. After these things I looked, uh -huh. and behold, uh -huh. a great multitude, which no one could number. Okay, he says that even though I have scattered them around, and I'm choosing only Judah, yet the people of Israel shall be in multitudes like the son of the sea. What I promised Abraham, I shall do it. Now here, even after the end of the age, after tribulation, look at it. It says what? After this, I look and behold, behold, a great multitude which no one could number. Can you number the sound of the sea? No. Can you number these people he saw? No. Uh, in the spirit, he could not even number. Physically, you can't number. Now, let's go ahead. Of all nations. Uh, of all tribes, nations. Tribes. People. What did they go, what the Lord say promised to Abraham? He says, all nations. In you, all nations. All tribes. All peoples. Yes, let's go ahead. And tongues. And tongues. And standing before the throne standing and before the lamb. Standing before the throne and the lamb. Yes. Clothed with white robes. They were clothed with white robes. These are the people who made it. They were multitudes. Now people preach and say, they, they, they didn't see 500. You don't have eyes. Shut up. God is not a man who, who should lie. So they say, God showed me. That's the reason why God did not talk to you. It's a lie. We have not seen God. Don't fear them. It's not true. Please, this one. Is it our mother's Bible? This is what's Bible? Whose Bible? God's word. Please, read on. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Yes. Clothed with white robes, with palm branches uh -huh. in their hands. Uh -huh. And crying out with a loud voice. Palm branches saying, representing victory. That is why Jesus went to enter the Jerusalem. He said, yes, you know. At that time, you see the churches, the Pentecostal, we carry what? Palm branches. Sign of victory. Triumphant entry. So holding palm branches in heaven, standing before the throne. Victory now. Yes, let's go ahead. Verse 10. Yes. And crying out with a loud voice. Yes. Saying, mm -hmm. Salvation belongs to our God. Yeah. Who sits on the throne. Yes. And to the Lamb. Yes. All the angels stood around the throne. Yes. And the elders and the four living creatures. Yes. And fell on their faces before the throne. Yes. And worshipped God. Uh-huh. Saying. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom. Mm-hmm. 
thanksgiving and honor and power and might uh -huh. be to our God forever and ever. Uh -huh. Let's go Amen. to 13. Let's go, let's go. Yes. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, uh -huh. Who are these arrayed in white robes? Uh, who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And where are they coming from? And I one of the him, elders, so he was in heaven, he didn't see them. One of the elders. I told you that people think that people are standing before the throne of God. No, it's not like that. You are seeing the end of everything. One of the elders is asking a question. He didn't see them. He didn't know where they come from. Uh -huh. He asked a question. He says what? And I said to him. Yes. Sir. Sir. You know. You know. So he said to me. Uh -huh. These are the ones who come out of the great In heaven he addressed the elder as sir. The elder came to the end to work. There are people you see. They are elders. They sit on thrones. But you disrespect. He, he, sir, you know. These are the ones who are, these are the ones. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. They come out of the great tribulation. So they say great tribulation, all of us would have been wiped out. Now when we gave them the scripture, now they come back and say, oh, there will be some people there. But the Israelites who did not receive God, they are the ones. Are they what? Look at what he say. Are they multitudes? Are they nations? Are they tribes? Are they peoples? Are they tongues? Israelites is one nation. So he's talking about nations. Now let's go ahead, let's go ahead. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation uh, uh -huh. and wash their robes. They, their robes have been what? washed. So the great tribulation is a type of washing. There's a water purification washing people. You remember the wine that was taken? Oh, okay. Let's go ahead. And wash their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Therefore, they are before the throne of God uh -huh. and serve him day and night in his temple. Uh -huh. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. Ah. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. This is it. The sun shall not strike them, yes. nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. You Amen. are the one he spoke about. The last day group. I bless you in Jesus' name. Man. I prophesy over you. Yes, Lord. The blessing of God is upon you. Amen. You are the people God spoke about. Amen. The multitudes. Yes, Lord. The tribes. Yes. The tongues. Amen. Have you seen that we have gathered together? We are from different tribes, different tongues, different days, but we are one. To gather all of them together as what? One. one. The one who divides is not God. Mm. We are together. Together. Say we are together. We are together. We are together. We are together. We trust you've enjoyed today's broadcast. For more information, visit www.johnanarchyministries.org, www.worldwidewordministries.org, or call 0302-507-154 or 0540-996-670. This broadcast is made possible by partners of John Anarchy Ministries.